Hello everyone, this is Human Hard Drive, and today we're going to be starting our Electronics 201 lecture series. Um, this is different than the Electronics 101, which deals more with analog electronics, whereas 201 is going to deal with the more digital side of things. So we're going to be going over such things as binary and well, non-base 10 number systems, ICs, logic circuits, and stuff like that. So I thought I'd start off today with something, well, it's the basics of Electronics 201, and that's the concept of analog versus digital. Now, analog is your, we're going to apply to the math people, that's the continuous side of things, whereas digital is the discrete. So, continuous is if I say, pick a number between 0 and 1. You can pick any number between 0 and 1. 0 0.1, 0 0.11, 0 0.111, 0 0.245698, etc. Discrete is you have a defined number of steps within a range. So, from 0 to 1, there are 5 steps, and you can only pick those numbers. So, that's 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1. <clears throat> so, that's the main difference. Um, if you, when we do digital stuff, um, if you've done stuff with computer programming and you talk about things like um, bits of, um, not bits of accuracy, what am I, precision. So if you have like a floating point variable that has so many bits of precision, you can get to a near continuous thinking with digital if you have an infinite precision, but seeing as we have yet to create a means of creating uh, an infinite precision, there has yet to exist. No, well, there, one doesn't exist yet. So, let's talk about the crossover between digital and analog. So, say you've got a wave function. So here's your voltage and here's time. Now, your discrete, uh, let me just mark that discrete, which is your digital again, you can only pick so many points along this curve and you're stuck within the boxes that they form. So if you uh, know your calculus, this is sort of like your Riemann sums. You can only pick within these boxes, and that only gives you so much information. Whereas your continuous which is your analog, you can pick any point here, 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 anywhere along that line. So in order to simulate uh, a continuous function in discrete, you've got to incre increase your accuracy, thereby decreasing the spaces between these points. So, when we go on to later things such as DACs, which are uh, digital to analog, yeah, I know, I misspelled that, and ADCs, which are analog digital there we go. so these things have a number of bits of precision so they can have like 8 bit steps, 10 bit steps 16 bit steps all to get closer and closer to this idea of continuous but until you get an infinite bit resolution you will never get there so let's talk about logic levels. Now, logic levels are, uh, how can I say this? Logic levels are the things, are their states that computer chips recognize as being high or low, true or false, on or off, binary states. <clears throat> so, there's two kinds. There's bipolar. That's awful. Bipolar and unipolar. Bipolar is, say you've got uh, a perfect bipolar one is um, 
an RS-232, which is a, um, if you have an old computer, and you, it's that serial port on the back, that is actually 12 volts positive to 12 volts negative. I think that's the voltage range. So this being on and this being off. Unipolar is like your TTL or your CMOS, which can range from 5 volts plus to 0 volts. So bipolar is you've got 12 volts on one side, 12 volts on the negative side. Unipolar is 5 volts and on, and it's always ground 0 volts. Okay. So, and again, these numbers can change depending on the system. So, like the Arduino, the AT Mega 328, I know that that has a 5 volt logic system. It's a 5 volt logic system. So, if I set something logic high, I'm going to see 5 volts out. If I set something logic low, I'm going to see 0 volts. Whereas something like the Netduino has a 3.3 volt logic system, which only can put out 3.3 volts logic high. Now that's driving something. There, would, there's something we'll talk about called syncing, which we'll get into later. But I want to show you this graph, which is kind of important. So, if we go back, if we, I'm going to use the same color scheme I'm using here. Okay, so there's your here's a voltage time. So there's your analog, there's your con there's your analog signal, and here is your digital signal. So this is logic, this is on, this is off, and the blue is just everything in the middle. And this point right here, right at the intersection, it's a very important thing. This is the threshold voltage. Now, where I said this is the syncing thing, the again, the Arduino can source 5 volts on to 0 volts off. The threshold voltage is the voltage required to tell the, some chip that something is on or off. This is, this is that region, oh, this is that region right here. Okay, that's a hairy region to be in. You want to be very far above or very far below on your continuous curve. And if you play very close to this, it's considered like floating, which lets, which will make the, if there's any fluctuation in that voltage, it's going to change from on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. So if you stay over here at, say, your ground and over here at your 5 volts, then it's considered definitely on and off. But this is the threshold voltage. So for most logic circuits, it's like 2.5 volts. Anything above 2.5 volts, and it's on. Anything less than 2.5 volts, it's off. And again, that's the discrete. Your continuous is anything in between. And of course, not everything's going to be on or off. You're not always going to see 5 volts on, 0 volts off, because things are going to pull different amounts of current, and things are going to interact in different ways on and off so that's where you're going to see changes I just want to go over one more thing now when it comes to analog and digital okay uh, there are a couple components you're gonna if I give you some analog components this is what we're gonna be talking about later So analog components versus digital components so analog, if you watch, if you watch my uh, Electronics 101 series, you've got your resistors, your capacitors. I'll just say caps. Uh, you've got fuses. You've got inductors, and you've got uh, other components in this series. Your digital, you've got your ICs, your um, your five five fives your op amps, again all things we'll talk about later but right here in the middle there's this gray area and this is the f one of the first things we're going to talk about and that's the idea of the transistor 
Now the transistor is in the middle because it plays to both the analog and digital sides of things. And we're going to talk about those in probably the next video. Because these things are pretty tricky uh, when you talk about which side they play to. Alright, so let's review what we've talked about. Um, the difference between uh, analog and digital, your analog is your continuous, whereas your digital is your discrete, meaning analog you can point you can pick any point along this curve and you will know the voltage. The problem is with discrete that you can only have so many steps between or you can only have so many steps. So five steps you're going to know so many voltages and you're only going to have that voltage with such an accuracy. We talked about infinite precision, the unobtainable dream where if you can obtain uh, infinite precision with discrete and digital circuits you will essentially understand the analog. We can thank our friend Zeno for that. This idea of bipolar and unipolar logic ranging from a positive and negative voltage um, logic, positive being on, negative being off, to unipolar where ground is off and anything above its threshold voltage is on. And this area right here, the floating area, where you should try to avoid as much as possible of logic voltage. And we talked about what we're going to be talking about in the next uh, videos, so RICs and probably the transistor up next. <clears throat> All right, uh, I should point this, I'm going to say this now. This is, I'm making these videos to try and educate people, so if you have any questions, please um, put them in the comments below, and I try to make a viewer submission video every third episode, uh, so please put in your questions, because I'd love to answer them, because I'm all about informing you. So, uh, this has been Human Hard Drive, thanks for watching.